Grace and peace to you. Uh, welcome. Good evening. <laughs> this is a little different. Uh, Marsh Hall is pretty empty uh, here today besides me and, uh, and Lance. Uh, and my daughter Sloan is coloring uh, on the floor on the other end of the room. Uh, but welcome uh, to Wednesday night. Uh, we're going to try to uh, experiment with this platform uh, over the next couple weeks uh, and see if we can find ways of kind of uh, connecting like this uh, in this time of, uh, of social disruption uh, through this distan distancing. Um, and so uh, we'll start kind of like we always do with some announcements and, and prayers. Uh, I guess the first thing to announce is what many of you already know, we will be suspending our uh, gatherings uh, through the rest of March. Uh, and typically we tend to follow, especially during, through the week with school, we, with uh, the office, we follow the school system for guidance in emergency situations. So um, I can see this suspension of gatherings uh, going well into April. Uh, as it stands now, NEISD and NISD and other schools in the area uh, are going to be out until April 6th, uh, they say now. Uh, so most likely uh, we'll be following uh, in the same way. Um, uh, but we'll be uh, doing worship live online. Uh, you can catch that streaming on our website. Uh, we believe we have that fixed, so it will be working this Sunday. Uh, and then a lot of you were able to tune in on Facebook Live last Sunday. Uh, and that seemed to work well. Uh, so look for those uh, ways of connecting, as well as Mike Masser is going to be doing daily devotionals. Uh, he's been writing all week on the Beatitudes. Uh, and that's just a wonderful way uh, to, uh, to have some time of reflection and prayer uh, throughout these days. Uh, we have uh, a lot of needs on our prayer list. Uh, you know them. You're probably, uh, we have a Woodland Prayer Ministry that sends out daily emails. If you want to be a part of that, just email Ruby uh, at ruby at woodlandbc.org and uh, she can get you on there so you can pray along daily. Um, uh, one of our young adults will be returning from the Peace Corps. He's been working in South Africa. Uh, be in prayer for him in the coming days. Um, as well as other doctors and nurses, restaurant owners, HEB, those in retirement communities, uh, parents and children trying to figure out what to do in the days ahead. This is certainly a strange time. Um, so I invite you, uh, wherever you are, in the midst of whatever's happening in the, in the chaos or quiet around you, uh, I invite you into this time of prayer. So let's pray together. God, when the world falls silent, when we turn off our TVs and when the glow of screen light relents, let your stillness set in our hearts. Let your voice be the one that greets us in the silence. And may your peace be the beginning of our response. We pray that you'd be with those who are ill. We pray that you'd be with our health care providers. The administrators running hospitals give them wisdom to meet challenges they've never faced. Doctors give them courage to face the unknown. Uh, nurses give them courage, strength, and compassion to touch the untouchable. And for the orderlies, staff, maintenance, custodial, administrative workers in these facilities, Lord, help them to see themselves as a part of this good work, to know how important they are in the larger tapestry of healthcare. God, we thank you for our public leaders at the local, state, and federal level. We pray for wisdom, for peace, and for justice for all. God, for all who are affected by this crisis, uh, servers in restaurants, bartenders, small business owners, employees at HEB and other grocers doing all they can, for teachers, administrators, people in retirement communities and assisted living, Lord, we pray for stay-at-home moms, parents worried about children, parents worried about balancing child care and and work, children who are afraid, parents who are afraid, all of us who fear the news and who are living with anxiety. We pray that you might lead us, grant us wisdom, 
Grant us courage for the living of these days. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. All right, welcome to our Bible study time this evening. It is very strange here in an empty room in Marsh Hall. Uh, but have you been using the Lenten devotional guides that you've been provided? Uh, the Bible study is going to be week three today from that guide, and I encourage you to take a look at it. Uh, we'll post some links for you to be able to find it easily. Uh, the first week in this guide, we learned about how God is a fire, purifying, life-giving, uncontrollable, through the story of Moses and the burning bush. Last week, we looked at God's presence in the world through the creation accounts. We are reminded of the goodness of all of creation and that people are created in God's image. This week, we'll look at our relationship with God and each other face to face. Every once in a while on this video, I'm going to ask you to pause and reflect on something or read something. I prefer an interactive Bible study, and we're going to do our best to simulate that and make that happen today on this video. So first, reflect on this question. And as you reflect, you can talk with the people that are around you right now, or you can uh, type up your answers on the YouTube comments or on our Facebook group, uh, the Woodland Facebook group. Um, whatever ways you can try to interact with this, that would be great. We would really appreciate it. So here's the question. What particular passages in the Bible make your hearts burn within you? What particular passages make your hearts burn within you? I'll go first. Romans 5, 8 often comes to my mind. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Another one is Hebrews 4, 16. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Now, what about you? Pause this video and reflect. Our scripture today is in Genesis 32, 22 through 33, 10. I'll be reading the New Living Translation. During the night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two servant wives, and his eleven sons and crossed the Jabbok River with them. After taking them to the other side, he sent over all his possessions. This left Jacob all alone in the camp, and a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. When the man saw that he would not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of its socket. Then the man said, Let me go for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? The man asked. He replied, Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob, the man told him. From now on, you will be called Israel, because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Please tell me your name, Jacob said. Why do you want to know my name? The man replied. Then he blessed Jacob there. Jacob named the place Peniel, which means face of God. For he said, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been spared. The sun was rising as Jacob left Peniel, and he was limping because of his injury to his hip. Even today, the people of Israel do not eat the tended meat from the hip socket because of what happened the night when the man strained the tendon of Jacob's hip. Then Jacob looked up and saw Esau coming with his 400 men. So he divided his, the children among Leah, Rachel, and his two servant wives. He put the servant wives and their children at the front, Leah and her children next, and Rachel and Joseph last. Then Jacob went ahead. As he approached his brother, he bowed to the ground seven times before him. Then Esau ran to meet him and embraced him, threw his arms around his neck and kissed him. And they both wept. Then Esau looked at the woman and children and asked, Who are these people with you? These are the children God has graciously given me, your servant, Jacob replied. Then the servant wives came forward with their children and bowed before him. Next came Leah with her children, and they bowed before him. And finally Joseph and Rachel came forward and bowed before him. 
And what were all the flocks and herds I met as I came? Esau asked. And Jacob replied, They are a gift, my lord, to ensure your friendship. My brother, I have plenty, Esau answered. Keep what you have for yourself. But Jacob insisted, No, if I have found favor with you, please accept this gift from me. And what a relief to see your friendly smile. It is like seeing the face of God. What stood out to you from this passage? Did you notice anything that you have not noticed before? Pause the video and reflect on this. I really enjoy going to Macedonia to work a lot alongside Jeff and Alicia. I love going to the cow bank and seeing all that Jeff and Gosman are doing. I love the ice cream from that fresh milk they make every morning. I love working with Dusko at the Macedonian Food Bank. His compassion for people is inspiring and contagious. And I really love hanging out with the beautiful people of Paraka. They are a picture of what heaven is like to me. Another thing I enjoy is looking at the Macedonian Orthodox churches and their icons. Every time I go, I try to bring back at least one. Here's one of Jesus. And another one of the Trinity. This is an intriguing one that Diana Bridges gave me. Icons are a part of the Eastern Church's worship. There is a connection between icons and the biblical understanding that people are created in the image of God. In the Greek translation of Genesis 1.27, the word image is icon. The Holy Spirit guides the icon painter to put the viewer in touch with the spiritual reality that the icon represents. In the New Testament, we can see the face of God in Jesus Christ. In a moment, I'm going to put up on the screen a modern icon that we're going to look at today. So take a look at it. It's called Christ is Our Reconciliation. It has a variety of scenes in it. Some are biblical, some are relating to the tradition and history of the church. The truth this icon is teaching us is the need for and fruit of reconciliation. I encourage you to read through this week three of the Lenten devotional guide, these pages, and to learn more about this icon. The central scene in this icon is of Jacob and Esau from Genesis 33.10. Did you happen to notice the ladder in the back of the image? This is a reference to Genesis 28, 12, when 20 years earlier, Jacob fled from his brother Esau and saw a vision at Bethel of a ladder stretching up into heaven with angels going up and down. Did you catch the last phrase in our passage today? The New Living Translation, Genesis 33:10, 10 says, and what a relief to see your friendly smile. It is like seeing the face of God. The literal Hebrew translation is, Your face is like the face of God to me. With such graciousness, you have received me. What a fantastic image this is. Now let's look back to the first part of our passage. Genesis 32, 22 to 32, tells about a wrestling match Jacob had with mysterious divine man. He called the place Peniel, which is from two Hebrew words meaning face and God. Look at this icon again. As the brothers embrace, it seems to have a feeling of wrestling. The icon reminds us there's a real connection between our relationship with God and our relationship with people. If we want to see the face of God, we must be ready to see the face of God in people. Can you see the image of God reflected in your brothers and sisters, your parents, your children? your neighbors, your enemies, the other. Jesus thinks this is pretty important. He tells us the greatest commandment is to love God. The second is like it, to love others. 
In the parable of the sheep and goats, in Matthew 25, Jesus says, When you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Maybe this is why the latter is in that scene. It is only when we are reconciled with each other that the latter, latter can stretch between heaven and earth. Looking into faces is sometimes easy and sometimes difficult, and sometimes terrifying, and sometimes confusing. In Exodus thirty three eleven, we read that God would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Yet in Exodus thirty three twenty, God tells Moses, "You may not look directly at my face, for no one may see me and live." Think about those different times in your own life. Do you have moments like Peter, when he said that Jesus was the Christ, or maybe when he denied Jesus three times? Looking into God's face is different for us at different times. There is a connection between seeing God face to face and us being changed. Think about 2 Corinthians 3.18. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. Hear this reflection by Jane Williams. Jesus' face is what ours is supposed to look like. If only we could be as human as God. Our faces are a series of masks that we try on and discard, always searching for the real me, always looking for the face that will make others love us or fear us, and all the time getting further and further away from the face we were made to mirror, the face of Jesus. How many different masks we seem to think we need. Masks that make us powerful and vulnerable, beautiful, feared, acceptable. Some that we have so deeply internalized we don't even know that, we, that they are just masks. But the irony is that without these masks, we are made in the image of God. We must learn to cherish our own real face while also cherishing the faces of others. We need to know our own prejudices. We all have them. We need to humanize others and look for the image of God in them. Lent is a season of change and transformation. Let's look for the change God wants to make in us by looking into the faces of others and seeing the face of God. Reflect on some of these questions, either with the people you're with right now, or, and online, the comments in YouTube or on our Facebook group. How does the story of Jacob wrestling with the angel speak to you? What do you think we can learn from it? What mask do you put on to hide yourself from others? How can fear be destructive of personal and social relationships? How can we follow Jesus' example of building trust with others through words and actions? Right now, it is difficult to imagine face-to-face -face interactions. What are some new ways we can connect with people? Remember during this crazy time we're in to reach out to our Woodland community, to your family, your friends, your neighbors in unique ways during this unique time. Maybe you can make a video of encouragement and send it to someone through Facebook or YouTube. Let's get creative. Blessings to you. Let's pray together. God, thank you for meeting us face to face. Help us not miss you in the words of Scripture and in the faces of people. Help us to pay attention. Help us to recognize changes we need to make to be more like Jesus. Amen. Well, since we typically end our Wednesday night times with standing together, holding hands, and singing Blessed Be the Tie, obviously we can't do that right now, and we can't really hold hands in this day and age, but I bet you could sing along with me and Sloan, uh, even if you're home or wherever you are. Uh, so you know the song? It goes, Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is light to that above. <laughs>
think she wants me to be quiet. <laughs> God be with you. See you soon.